Hello everyone. Welcome to Fast Track on Hell Global. I am Samik Sen. Joining us today a very renowned third umpire of IPL, Mr. Yashwan Bade. Thank you so much for uh, taking out this time and welcome to Hell Global. I would like to begin by asking you what are the most memorable matches you have played? There are quite a few memorable matches actually. It's been a long time, but I'd like to mention only one here, which is really very special, and I will not forget it for the lifetime. This was during our play- playing days in the late nineties. Be I don't exactly remember the year, but it's in nineteen ninety six or ninety seven. it was in the ranji trophy championship goa yeah. versus karnataka uh, yeah. goa were playing against karnataka that year and as you all know that karnataka is supposed to be a very strong side since oh. last very few means many years so that time karnataka had won ranji trophy championship the previous season and also they had beaten the rest of india in the irani trophy sure. which which is played between the ranji trophy champions and the rest of india team where most of the indian cricketers the cap players the indian team players the international players they play and they had beaten that side which was a very strong side and they were really flying very high that time and so our match was scheduled 3 or 4 months after that so that karnataka bunch were really high in confidence and everything and goa were treated like underdogs that time and we were placed in a group south zone group that time the championship was played in means the teams were divided in five groups one is north zone then south zone west east and central zone so we were placed in the south zone and south zone was supposed to be one of the strongest group Yes. where other teams apart from karnataka were tamil nadu and hyderabad who were very strong you know azuruddin arshad ayu and from tamil mm-hmm. nadu lots of players yeah they all were playing <coughs> so it happened that that year our match was scheduled so and we had two professionals from tamil nadu playing for us that year there was one was bibi chandrasekhar who was leading goa and another one was jay gokul krishnan the bowling all rounder yeah so in that match what happened in the toss is that we won the toss we we won the toss and he put karnataka into bat sorry we batted first okay <laughs> we batted first and we scored around 350 plus runs it was played in panjim the wicket was quite uh, helpful for the seamers so we scored 350 plus and when karnataka started their innings jay gokul krishnan who bowled extremely well in that match he got a fifer in that match in that innings particularly and uh, karnataka were bowled out for surprisingly for mere 100 runs 100 plus runs oh okay and so yeah 100 plus runs yes and then we asked them to follow on again so while following on in the second innings in the second innings also they collapsed jay gokul krishnan again got a fifer so in that total match he got around 11 wickets i think if i am correct and we went on to win that win that match by an innings and around 100 runs which was a unbelievable great achievement that time wow wow which, uh, yeah which, that that changed our self belief and we were all together a different bunch and later on we went on to been one more match against andhra and that year we just fell short by mere two points to qualify for the quarter finals of the ranji trophy which we could never think before okay so that that is a very golden moment for us for all that squad who played that year in a country like india where people are extremely emotional when it comes to cricket so how difficult is it to give decision i personally feel like you rightly said that india is a country with lots of emotions involved franchise also lots of supporters and there are so many die hard fans who are emotionally involved in all these cricket matches and they exp- the expectations are really high yes true so, yeah and in india when you are officiating you see the stadiums are really crowded 
very crowded and very noisy. So it really becomes with the noise level so high, you can hardly hear anything. So giving up decisions in the noise and the pressure levels and the tremendous ex expectations and the media scrutinies and the fans, they all come hard upon you when an error happens or a mistake happens, then they really come hard on you. So uh, there is too much of pressure when officiating in India, actually. Is there any process how you deal with this pressure? Uh, like we have our own mental tools. Like I always say before going, I have nothing to lose. Just go and do your best. So whatever has to happen will happen. So go and stand there and things ease out a little after that and do a lot of self-talk. And also the pre-match routines, like I also do meditations okay. and yeah, that all helps. It is required, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. It's so much of pressure. So what is the difference in officiating between a one day and IPL? If you compare, one day is a lot slower compared to the T20s, that is IPL. IPL is mostly a T20 tournament. <laughs> but I'll tell you that again, like in the last question you asked, there is a tremendous pressure in IPL. And there is lots of fan franchise fan following. And they really take on hard. And their expectations from the teams, from the support staff, as a player, whichever role you are playing in IPL, it really puts a lot of pressure because of all these challenges and this competition is so tough and the viewership throughout the world is, I think, the highest compared to any tournament, even more than the World Cup. So whatever cricket is being played all across the world, it has the highest viewership. So it always, and IPL always sets uh, high standards and to, you have to work upon that to maintain those standards and deliver to your best. So that pressure is always there. So it's always difficult to officiate in IPL. And we, even most of our colleagues has the same thing, even the international colleagues, they also share the same thing. Your career consists of over 100 T20 matches and one day. Can you just name one match where it has been the most difficult match for you in terms of decision-making process? Do you remember any particular match? There are quite a few actually, but I don't remember in detail. But I like to put it in a different way. Like you asked, there are three types of formats. T20, one day, and a okay. test, which consists of three, four, or five days, depending upon the type of the test you are doing. So I always feel that T20 is always fast. One day you get some time, you can relax in between. For the test, uh, the things are changing. Means you don't know when the things will change. Every session, it will be different. And the endurance level, the concentration level, the awareness level needed to umpire in a test match, it should be at a highest level. And suddenly, like in one session, if nothing is happening, the things are going easy. So maybe uh, 15 minutes before the end of the season or the, before the interval, there might be one or two incidents where things start happening. And suddenly, if you are relaxed, then you're gone. So you should be ready for everything. There is no chance for you to relax. You need to be really on your toes and focusing all throughout. PRS enables the umpires to review the matches. Okay, It helps them. But at times, is it conflicting also? What is your take on it? As far as, in my opinion, if you ask me, I'm a strong supporter of DRS, actually, as it minimizes the human errors, the umpiring errors, which used to happen earlier. So it has minimized to a lot of good extent. And uh, to put shortly, like when the teams also, like players and the teams, if we used to do the umpiring mistake, it was difficult to digest upon from the, they did not used to take it in a sporting spirit sometimes. So now since the DRS has come and the technology based decision comes back from the third umpire and if he suggests to 
stay on with your decision or overturn your decision he overturns your decision then the teams very often accept it on the based on the uniformity so mostly i think the most of the crowd and uh, most of the players teams uh, they have all accepted and it is the need of the hour now and technology has always been a boost and a great support to the game so what is the role of your family in shaping your career how did it all start when did you decide that you will do this family i'll say that it all started when i was a kid my father he was a cricketer he did not play for state and he used to play club cricket he was founder of a club okay and uh, yeah whenever he used to go for the matches on the holidays or the sundays so he used to take me along to the matches so i used to go there practice with those senior players and everything and uh, that's how it all started and all the initial lessons i got from my father then he put me in the coaching coaching nets then i went along to play for the state and everything and there was a he was a, always a big supporting pillar for me always throughout my all my cricketing journey and he used to feel very happy on all my achievements whatever day and always the mothers my mother's blessings were always there she used to always feel happy and support me at the time and now after marriage when i'm into umpiring my wife as i am traveling most of the times like 7 to 8 months in a year i stay outside for my umpiring duties so she has to manage all the domestic duties and all the outside duties also yeah so it puts a lot of workload on her and she manages that so without them it would have been a very difficult so i owe a lot and a lot of credit goes to them for whatever little i have achieved my last question to you what is your word of advice to the people who want to enter this field of refereeing as a career option refereeing i would suggest the youngsters would because the bcci has a exam patterns of it is it starts like it is level 1 first then the level 2 so level 1 is kind of basic basic then level 2 and then the practical exam that is the viva and practical exam so one needs to do a lot of umpiring the practical umpiring you just cannot become an umpire by just reading the laws or by watching the match on the tv you have to spend actual time your practice sessions and into the match the things which you can learn from your own ex- experiences by being in that situation you won't learn by mere by reading or uh, hearing from someone so you need to sp- spend a lot of time on the ground you have to spend a lot of sweat everything and again you have to work a lot on your in- inner emotions how to control them i mean to say the mental maturity the mental toughness the bouncing back abilities should be high because once some you make some errors or sometimes the things are not working right for you you need to really bounce back as fast as possible otherwise your f- full session would be down and there might be some more mistakes uh, yeah so and always you should be reading the laws throughout refreshing yourself because the laws keep on changing every time so always need to go with the book always need to carry and whenever you get time you should go through it and revise one or two laws whatever the whenever you get time and always keep following cricket start analyzing thinking minutely about the game you should also try to pick up on the player psychology how they react in some situation which which can help you in the later the next levels so there is no shortcut for umpiring if you, to go directly you have to spend time on the field a lot of hard work has to be done so officiate okay. officiate and officiate whatever matches you get yeah. thank you so much mr barde it was lovely talking to you it was very yeah same here thank you thank you.